So next up, we have the level two charger. Fortunately for us, Toyota is always improving. For the 2026 model year, 10 minutes. That's all Toyota says you'll need to stop, plug in, sip coffee, and drive away with the kind of range that used to sound impossible. For years, critics mocked Toyota as the EV laggard, a giant hiding behind hybrids while Tesla and China raced ahead. But Toyota insists it wasn't late, it was patient. Now it's betting on solid state batteries to leap past today's lithium ion tech with faster chargings, longer range, and a battery life measured in decades. Let's test the promise and the clock. If it works, EVs change overnight. If it slips again, trust breaks fast. A 10 minute stop in 2028. Toyota likes to paint a very specific picture. It's 2028. You roll into a charging station built for the next era of electric driving. Maybe it sits near Toyota's Woven City test site. You plug in, walk inside, and before your drink cools down, your car is ready. Not ready to limp home, but ready for a real trip. Toyota's message is blunt. 10 minutes of fast charging, then more than 600 miles of driving. That story matters because the two biggest pain points for many drivers are still range anxiety and time. Most modern EVs can road trip, but only if you plan your stops and accept longer breaks. Toyota is trying to remove the mental math. It wants charging to feel like fueling, and it's also trying to remove the fear that your expensive battery will fade fast. Toyota executives have talked about packs that keep their strength for decades, not just a warranty period. But there's a second layer here. In the public mind, Toyota became the hybrid company, and some people read that as hesitation. Toyota wants the world to see a different story. Not hesitation, but timing. If it lands this leap, it doesn't just catch up. It jumps ahead, at least for a moment. And in the EV market, that moment can decide which brands people trust for the next 10 years. Solid versus liquid, the simple swap. Solid state batteries sound like a buzzword, but the core idea is almost laughably simple. Swap the liquid electrolyte for a solid one. In a normal lithium ion battery, the electrolyte is the medium that lets lithium ions move between the two electrodes as you charge and discharge. It works, but it brings baggage. The liquid can be flammable. It can degrade. It can also limit how tightly you can pack energy into a small space. In a solid state design, that highway for ions becomes a solid material. Toyota has focused heavily on sulfide-based solid electrolytes because they can be softer and more adhesive than brittle ceramics, which helps in manufacturing. If that solid layer can do its job, it becomes both a conductor and a separator. That opens the door to using a lithium metal anode, which is one of the biggest reasons the energy density can jump. More density means you can carry more energy without making the pack bigger or heavier. This is why solid state has been treated like the holy grail for so long. Faster ion movement can support faster charging, higher density can support a longer range, and removing a flammable liquid can reduce the risk of fire in a crash or a defect. On paper, it's a win on every front. The catch is that batteries don't live on paper. They live on potholes, heat waves, freezing nights, and years of hard charging. Japan's backing and Toyota's partners. Toyota isn't trying to pull this off alone. And that's a big clue that the company is thinking about factories, not just lab demos. Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry has certified Toyota's next generation battery development and production plan under a policy tied to the Economic Security Promotion Act. In plain terms, Japan wants a stronger domestic battery supply chain, and it is willing to support it. Two partnerships sit at the center of Toyota's solid state story. First is Sumitomo Metal Mining, which is working with Toyota on cathode materials, designed to resist degradation over repeated charge and discharge cycles. Sumitomo has said it aims for mass production of these materials around Japan's fiscal year 2028, with Toyota as a priority customer. The second is Idemitsu Kosan, an energy company that teamed with Toyota to develop mass production methods for solid electrolytes and to build a real supply chain. 
Idemitsu has also announced plans to build capacity for lithium sulfide, a key ingredient for sulfide solid electrolytes. Put those together and you see the plan. Lock down the hard parts of the bill of materials before the first high profile launch. It's also a national strategy. China and South Korea have dominated much of the battery world. Japan wants back in and Toyota is the spear tip. The performance claims explained. Now for the numbers that make people raise an eyebrow. Toyota has talked about ranges around 1,000 kilometers, about 621 miles, and charging from 10% to 80% in roughly 10 minutes for its first all-solid-state EVs. Some messaging even hints at longer ranges later, as the chemistry improves. Compared to many current mainstream EVs that live in the 250 to 350 mile zone, that would feel like a different category of vehicle. Is it physically possible? Yes, in the sense that higher energy density can genuinely deliver more range from the same pack volume. If you can use a lithium metal anode safely, and if the solid electrolyte stays stable, you can store more energy per kilogram. Fast charging also becomes more realistic if the internal resistance stays low and the cell can handle heat without breaking down. Then there's the claim that sounds almost wild. A battery lifespan measured in decades with Toyota executives suggesting lifetimes several times longer than conventional packs. Long life is not just about chemistry. It's about the interfaces inside the cell staying smooth, intact, and evenly stressed as they expand and contract. Safety is the quieter headline, but it might be the most important one for mass adoption. Liquid electrolytes can burn. Solid electrolytes are generally more thermally stable. If Toyota compare that stability with durability, it could reduce fire risk, widen the workable temperature window, and lower the need for heavy thermal management. That's how you get a lighter car with more range, not just a bigger battery. The engineering wall, cracks and dendrites. If solid state batteries are so great, why aren't they everywhere already? Because the enemies are small, stubborn, and cruel. One is cracking. Many solid electrolytes behave like glass. They can fracture under vibration, pressure, and repeated swelling of the electrodes. A tiny crack is not a cosmetic issue. It can become a failure path that grows with every cycle. The other enemy is dendrites. During charging, lithium can form needle-like structures that push into the electrolyte. If a dendrite reaches the other side, it can short-circuit the cell. That can lead to sudden failure, overheating, and in worst cases, a fire. Solid electrolytes were supposed to block dendrites, but in real cells, stresses and imperfect contact can still let them form. Toyota and Idemitsu have said their breakthrough is a solid electrolyte that is flexible, adhesive, and resistant to cracking. That sounds like marketing, but it points to a real materials science challenge. You need the electrolyte to stay in intimate contact with the electrodes, cycle after cycle, without gaps opening up. Even if you solve that, you still face manufacturing. You need high yield, low cost, and consistent quality at a massive scale. A battery that works in a lab pouch cell is not the same as a battery you can stamp out by the millions. This is why every deadline slip matters. The hard part is not making one impressive cell. The hard part is making a million of them, safely, cheaply, and the same. Roadmap, rivals, and the deadline question. Toyota's solid state plan sits on top of a broader battery roadmap. Before the full solid-state leap, Toyota has described a sequence of next-gen packs, including cost-focused lithium-iron phosphate options and higher-performance chemistries meant to raise range and cut cost in the mid-to-late 2020s. The logic is simple. Build supply chains, learn manufacturing lessons, and grow EV volume while solid-state matures. Meanwhile, the race is tightening. Mercedes-Benz has shown real-world testing with solid-state prototypes and has spoken publicly about long-range runs. Nissan says it has a pilot line and targets the late 2020s. Honda is also pushing its own path. In China, companies and automakers talk aggressively about solid-state and semi-solid-state cells, and battery giants like KTL and BYD have pointed to the same general window with wider mass production closer to 2030. And then there's the credibility problem Toyota has to overcome. 
Toyota spoke about solid-state batteries years ago with early targets that slid again and again. Each new promise sounds better than the last, but each delay makes people ask the same question. Will this time be different? The fairest answer is this. Toyota has more pieces in place now than it did before. Government certification, material partners, and announced plans that look like real industrial buildup. But the finish line is still brutal. If Toyota arrives in 2027 to 2028, it could steal the spotlight. If it arrives in 2030, it may be huge, but it won't be alone. So here's the takeaway. Solid state batteries are not magic, and Toyota's history of shifting deadlines gives skeptics plenty of ammo. But the pieces are finally lining up. Government support in Japan, a cathode push with Sumitomo metal mining, and a solid electrolyte supply chain with Edomitsu. If Toyota hits 2027 to 2028, you may see EVs that charge in minutes, drive farther, and worry less about fires and aging packs. If it misses, rivals will gladly take the crown. Either way, the next few years will decide who wins. Watch pilot lines, early cars, and real-world test results, not glossy promises alone.